175, Lesson 13, Section 4.5, and we're working with real zeros of a polynomial function. And we work with zeros before in polynomial functions, but those functions were already factored. Now these polynomials are not factored, and so we're going to learn how to factor them, and then find our zeros from that. First, we're going to start with the remainder theorem. And basically, the division of uh, algorithm of polynomials, if f of x and g of x denote polynomial functions. So f of x would be the numerator, g of x would be the denominator, then we get a quotient and remainder, and there's our divisor. Um, where r of x is either the zero polynomial or a polynomial of degree less than that. So, in other words, when we have a zero, then this remainder part here is going to come out to be zero. So when we have like an x-intercept, then this remainder part, when we divide, what we should have left is zero. All right, let's see how that works. All right, uh, let f be a polynomial function of f of x divided by another function that would be this part, the g of x x minus c. So if we took this divisor, right, set it equal to zero, we get x equals c, we put that in function into our function, and we want to see is that a zero. Like for example, here we have f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. And so if we took this x plus 2, set it equal to zero, we get x minus 2 this one would be x equals to 1. So we want to know, is this negative 2, that's this f of c part here, is that a 0? When we, if we were to divide that out, we get negative 1. So in other words, this would be your remainder. If we were to divide x, minus, x plus 2 into this, your remainder would be negative 1. And that's known as the remainder theorem. Just plug in negative 2 into the polynomial and you get whatever your remainder is going to be out. For b, we're going to put in, set that equals 0, we get x equals 2 positive 1. So for that, we're going to put positive 1 in here and let's see what kind of remainder we get from that. Okay, so we put in 1, 1, 1, 1, and we end up with a remainder of 5. So if we were to take this polynomial, divide it into our original polynomial, we would get a remainder of 5, and that's the, known as the remainder theorem. And this can be very useful in checking our work to, to verify that we divided correctly. And also it's a quick way to find out, you know, what, which numbers are zeros. Uh, later on we'll, show, we'll see how that works. Let f be a polynomial function where x minus c is a factor of f of x if and only if we plug in this value here and we get a zero remainder out. So if we take x minus c, plug it into our function and we get zero out, then we know that this number is one of the x-intercepts or one of the zeros and is a factor of our polynomial. All right. So that's what this is saying here. If x minus c is a factor, then we can say, then we know that f of c equals to 0. All right, we want to see if, if we subtract it, if we set this equal to 0, we get x equals negative 1. We want to see is negative 1 a factor. And so we plug that in to our uh, function, and we get 0 out. So we know that x plus 1 is a factor. All right. So we would say, we would put parentheses x plus 1 as a factor, and then we would use synthetic division to find what the rest of the factor is. Okay, let's try x minus 1. Set that equals 0. We get x equals 2 positive 1. Put that in. So here's 1, 1, 1, 1 and for x. And that tells us that if we were to divide x minus 1, we would get a remainder 4. 
well that is not that means that one is not one is not a zero is not an x intercept well, that's useful information for us to know that so that means x minus one is not a factor of f of x polynomial function cannot have more than more real zeros than its degree so um, like in this last example here we cannot have more factors than three well that would make sense right because x minus uh, c times x minus c times x minus c that's all the factors we can have all right uh, use the rational zeros theorem to list the potential rational zeros here we have a polynomial function and what we do is we take the p over q in other words we take we want to see is p yeah, ep over q you know what uh, factors we can come up from that and that's all our potential zeros so for example we look at our leading term and our trailing term and so we want this the, the negative 12 that would be our P that would be our factors of our constant and then we the Q that would be the 3 that's our factors of our leading coefficient and so we would see that factors of um, 12 would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And so let's see, there's a way that you can do this, okay, where it's easy to make like a table. Okay, so here's our p over q and um, here's uh, p over q alright and we said that was um, 12 over 3. Okay, so factors of 12 are 1 and 12 if we looked at factors of 12. We know that factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. So we would put here 1. Uh, and, and 12, we would put in here, um, let's do it this way, 1, 2, 3, um, and then 4, 6, and 12. Okay, over factors of 3. Well, that's just 1 and 3. Okay, so we want to come up with all the possible zeros. So the way we do this, we make a table. And so this will be our P, and here's our Q. So we're going to put, and everything in here is plus or minus. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And so um, now we want our Q, our factors for 3. 1 and 3. All right, so now this would be plus or minus, and I, I'm not going to do all the plus or minuses because um, this would be 1 over 1, right, or just 1. 
Now this would be 2, since 2 is the top, 2 is going to be the numerator. Since, and then the 1, that's always going to be the denominator. So that would just be 2. Next one would be 3 over 1, that would be plus or minus 3. This would be plus or minus, and so on. This would be plus or minus 4 over 1, plus or minus 6 over 1, plus or minus 12 over 1. Now, we're looking at 1 and 3. Let me make that a better looking 3 there. Okay, so this would be 1 over 3. So that's plus or minus 1 over 3. The next one would be plus or minus 2 over 3. Third one would be 3 over 3 or 1. Next one would be 4 over 3. Next one would be 6 over 3 which is 2 and 12 over 3 which is uh, 4 okay now we want to get rid of our duplicates so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 well, we don't have a 1 -third, so we can keep that we don't have a 2 thirds so we can keep that but we do have a 1 so we're just going to get rid of that one we don't have a plus or minus 4 thirds we do have a 2 so we can cross that one out. And we do have a 4, so we can cross that one out. So our, all our possible zeros are going to be plus or minus 1 third plus a comma plus or minus uh, 2 thirds comma, plus or minus uh, four-thirds, uh, comma, and then uh, plus or minus one, and plus or minus two, uh, plus or minus three, and, and so on, plus or minus three, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. So what this means is you can have a positive 1 third or a negative 1 third, a positive 2 thirds or a negative 2 thirds, positive 4 thirds or negative 4 thirds, and so on. So what you would do at that point is you could take any one of these numbers and plug it back in to this polynomial to see which ones come out to be zeros. Well, there's an easy way to do that, and that is to plug this equation into the y equals in your calculator, where you, where you normally plot your function, and then go to second and table, and then anything that's on the y column that shows a zero, that's your um, those are your zeros. Well, the problem with that is you see how these are fractions? It won't, it won't pick up on the fractions. It, what it, this can do when you plug in your calculator, put this in the y equals, go to second on the table and see what y values are zero, it, it helps you to start with your first factor. And that is a huge uh, starting point. Because if your first one is a fraction, right, then that would be kind of hard. You, you could spend literally you know, several minutes trying to plug all of these in the calculator to find it. But using the second and table helps. But it, the sec, using second and table does not, it only gives the integers, it doesn't give all of them. And it does not give zeros where you'd have to use the quadratic formula. But it is a good place to start most of the time. And another thing is with the second and table is if you have a repeating zero factors, it doesn't show that either. But like I said, it's a good place to start, and it can save you a lot of time that way. Okay, so.
um, there's all of them, our P over Q, and there's our fractions, and so on. Okay, so using that table help is, is a good tool. It's a, it can really narrow down some time for you. But, and, and get all the zeros and not miss one. Okay, find the real zeros of the polynomial right in factored form. Okay, well, if you plug one of them in, right, you take these possible zeros and you plug it in. Now, if you use synthetic division, you get, you find that, now if you were to put negative 1 into here, you'd see you'd get a 0. So you'd want to start with negative 1. Well, what I was telling you to do is plug this e equation into your y equals in your calculator, where you would go, you know, normally put a function to graph it, and go to second on table, you would see that where x is negative 1, y is 0. And so you know you'd want to start with negative 1. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to divide. Negative 1 divided into that, into our polynomial. And what we're going to do is we're only going to use the coefficients. Like here's 3x cubed, we put in a 3. And here's a plus 8x squared, we're going to put an 8. Minus 7x, we're going to put a minus 7. Minus 12 we're going to put a minus 7. Now just like with um, long division, you had to have a place for the x, cube, x cubes, x squared, had to have something for x squared and so on. If there was a, there was one missing, you had to put 0. Well this is the same thing. Well this, this has got an x cubed, an x squared, an x and a constant. So we have a number for all three. We don't have to put any zeros in. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this three down and then we're going to multiply negative 1 times 3 and that's negative 3 so that we're going to put that in the second row and so 8 positive 8 negative 3 that gives us a 5 so now what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 1 times that number 5 and we get a negative 5 and we put that up here in the next space and then we take negative 7 and negative 5, and that gives us a negative 12. Now we're going to multiply negative 1 times negative 12, and that gives us a positive 12. Put it up in the second row. And then we have a positive 12 and a negative 12, we get 0. Well, when we get 0 in the deno as a remainder, this last number here, that's going to be our remainder. If we have 0 as a remainder, then we know that the negative 1 is a 0. All right, so this would be x minus, remember like when we had x minus r? Same thing here. They're using x minus c in this chapter. But basically it's the same thing. So this would be x minus a negative 1, and that would make it an x plus 1. So that's one factor. And then, <clears throat> so this would be your quotient here. That's going to be your second, ha second factor. So this would be, now, these are going to be one degree less than what you started with. So this is a 3x cubed. Now we have a, now we're, we have a 3x squared down here. So this is a 3x squared. And then this would be a positive 5, so that would be plus 5x, and then minus 12. So everything moves down one degree when you, after you divide it as your quotient. All right, and now from here, we can either factor use the square root method or the quadratic formula. Can't use the square root method because we don't have a difference of two squares. But maybe we can factor. And so we can factor. And we get 3x plus 3 and 3x minus 4. <coughs> so our zeros, we would set each one of these equal to 0. So <coughs> um, this is finding our zeros using the factored form. And uh, this is very important. Now notice we could not, we have one of the zeros is going to be 4 over 3. Well, you could not find that on the calcul on the table of value, second on table. You'd have to, you know, factor it out. <coughs> and notice that each one of these was the possible zeros. Here's 4 over 3. Po um, that was... Um, 
that zero, okay, there they are. <laughs> Here's four over three, positive, so this would be a positive four over three. There was a negative three from the plus or minus three, and here's a negative one from the plus or minus one. And so <coughs> those are our zeros. So that would mean that wherever this polynomial is going to have an end behavior of 3x cubed, going to move up and to the right, down and to the left, and its x-intercepts are going to be at 4 over 3, negative 3, and negative 1. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're going to find the, poly the, the zeros using a factored form. Okay, so there are at most four real zeros. There are at most four factored. Okay, we can factor it out four times. Okay, so our P over Q would be 9 over 2. So let's take another look at that real quick. Um, and so here's 9 over 2. Here's our P over Q. And so we're looking for our plus or minus P over Q, all possible zeros. And the key word here is possible. Okay. Well, factors of 9 are 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. So this would be 1, 3, and 9. And um, all, all possible for 2 is, is 1 and 2. So here's our P. Here's our Q. P, we're going to put 1. Give ourselves some room. 3 and 9. Q, we're going to put 1 and 2. So this will be 1 over 1 plus or minus 1, 3 over 1, so that would be 3, 9 over 1, that's plus or minus, plus or minus 9 over 1, or just 9, and then this will be plus or minus 1 half, and then plus or minus 3 halves, and plus or minus 9 halves. Okay, um, and so these are all our possible zeros. So we would go to our second table and, and see, seeing these possible zeros in here, we know that we can either look at plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. We won't be able to see the fractions using the second and table, but you know, maybe one of them is an integer. So if we went to our second table and looked at negative 1, we would find there would be negative 1, 0. And so that's a place for us to start. So we, here's our 2 is our leading coefficient. And we got 4, 3, 2, 1. So we don't have any gaps in here. So this would be 2 is our leading. And then 3x cubed, 13 would be our, for our 13x cubed. 29, that's for our 29x squared. So again, we're just using the coefficients. And now this would be, we start with negative 1, bring the 2 down. Then we multiply negative 1 times 2, and we get a negative 2. And now, thir no, now we add, or subtract. Thir positive 13, negative 2, we subtract, we get 11. Now we're going to multiply negative 11, negative 1 rather, times 11, and we get a negative 11. Put that in the second row. Positive 29, negative 11, that gives us 18. Multiply negative 1 times 18, 
and then put that in the second row, and that gives us a negative 18. Positive 27, negative 18 gives us a positive 9. Now we're going to multiply negative 1 times 9 and put that in the second row. That gives us a negative 9. Positive 9 and negative 9, we get 0. So, yes, negative 1 is a 0. We get a remainder of 0. So that just confirms what we knew before, that negative 1 is a 0. So when we go to put this in factored form, this would be x plus or minus 1. You should, it'll be x minus a negative 1, so it comes out to be x plus 1. And then we take this second row here, go 1 degree less, so this will be 2x cubed. And everything else goes down 1 degree. So this would be 11x squared plus 18x plus 9. Well, at this point, um, we can do a couple of things. We, one thing we can do is factor by grouping. Or, um, but looking at factor by grouping, we, we don't have any uh, common factors. Let's see, 2 and 11, no, it won't work. Can't do factor by grouping. But what we can do is go ahead and go back to our second table and see where else in the y column do we have another 0. And then do synthetic division again. And, well... Um, it looks like we don't have any others, but we can use negative 1 again. So this would be negative x plus 1 times x plus 1, so that would be x plus 1 parentheses squared. And so they drop the 2 down, negative 1 times 2, we get a negative 2, bring that up to the second row. 11 minus 2 is 9, negative 1 times 9, negative 9. 18 minus 9 is 9, negative 1 times 9 is negative 9, and we get 0 again. So again, we're going to go down 1 degree. So this would be 2x squared plus 9x plus 9. So this now we've got an x plus 1, and now this one here, this one here is this x plus 1. This one here is going to make another x plus 1. So that makes it x plus 1 parentheses squared. And here's our 2x squared plus 9x plus 9. Well, let's see, that would be, if we were to factor it, it um, doesn't look like, well, what we do is we, we can uh, factor that out to be x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. And let's see, let's check this. This would be 2x squared and a plus 3x and a plus the 6x is 9x, so that checks. And 3 and 3 is 9. <coughs> so our zeros are going to be x minus 1, you know, squared. So this, uh, I mean, x minus 1 is 1, 0. We don't have to write that twice. And then x minus 3 and x equals 2, negative 3 over 2, when we set them equal to 0. Okay? And those are our zeros. So what we did again was we had to find our possible zeros. And there's usually students get confused between zero, find all zeros and find all possible zeros. Possible zeros is where you use that table and you're just trying to find P over Q. After we find our possible zeros, then you can go plug this equation into the y equals and find where is y zero. And that's where we can start with our synthetic division. Once we go through this, and as we go through a synthetic division, put it in factored form, and then once we have it all factored out, then we can go ahead and find our zeros. Okay, solve the equation. Okay, and that's the last part. Um, problem. So here's our zeros right here. So basically when we talk about solve the equation, what they want is they want you to find the zeros. Okay, that's all they're doing there. And, you know, I mean, that's what you're solving for a quadratic, right? You know, you do the same thing, you factor, well, this is a higher power than a quadratic, but it's this, you know, basically you're factoring and then you set each factor to zero and, and then you've solved it. 
Okay, every polynomial function in the real coefficients can be uniquely factored into product or linear factors or irreducible prime quadratic factors. Um, and a polynomial with an odd degree that has real coefficients has at least one real zero in it. Okay. Intermediate value theorem, if f denotes a polynomial function of a is less than b, Okay, now what this means is that when a function crosses a line, if it has, if you have an x value and a, pos and a positive y value, and then you have another x value and that's a negative y value, then somewhere in between you had to have crossed the x-axis. And that's what this is here. If a is some value, the first value for x, put that a in your function and you get a, a negative y value. And then b, you plug that in and you get a positive y value. Somewhere in between there, it crossed the x-axis. And that's what that means. And that's a, you know that somewhere in between a and b, is there's a zero. Using the intermediate value theorem, locate a real zero. All right, so has a zero. So it has a zero between one and two. So we plug one into our function, and so this would be one here, one, and so that would be one minus one. You get negative one out. Okay, so at x is one, y is negative one. So now we put two in here x is 2, y is 23. So at 1, we had a negative y value. At 2, we had a positive y value. So somewhere in between 1 and 2, there had to, it had to have crossed the x-axis. And so somewhere in between, there's a 0. Uh, 